Dear learners, greetings of the day. In today's session, we shall be studying about a popular sparkling wine known as Champagne. This particular session will be divided into two parts. In part one, we shall study about what is Champagne, which are the different regions producing Champagne, and understanding what is Method Champenois. In the second section, we shall be studying about different types of Champagne, different brands of Champagne, and how to read a Champagne label. Before we move on with the session, let's exactly take a look and understand what is Champagne. Champagne is a type of wine. What is wine? By now, we know wine is an alcoholic fermented beverage. Fermented to be specific because if there is no fermentation, you cannot produce wine. Fermentation plays a very important role in production of wine as yeast consume on the natural sugars that are present in the grape juice and as a result ethyl alcohol and carbon dioxide are produced. By now we know that there are two different types of wine. There is still wine and there is sparkling wine and the example of still wines are red wine, we have white wine, whereas popular example of a sparkling wine is Champagne, which is produced in France and we have other countries like Spain, which produces Cava, which is a sparkling wine. But let's understand what is exactly sparkling wine. Sparkling wine has bubbly or fizzy nature. This particular bubbly or fizzy nature is result of carbon dioxide that is present in the wine. The objectives of this session are to understand the definition of champagne, to learn about brief history of champagne, and to understand about champagne manufacturing process which is called as Method Champenois. Let's start with the session. What is champagne? Champagne is one of the most iconic sparkling wine in the world. It is recognized as a part of celebration. Be it a birthday party, be it a celebration, be it a winning title, you always see a foamy drink that is being poured in the glasses when it is celebrations. Champagne is a French sparkling wine. However, there is a lot of confusion between what is sparkling wine and what is champagne. When I say it is a French sparkling wine, it means champagne is produced in Champagne region of France. There are around seven grape varieties which are permitted for the use of manufacturing of champagne but there are three major grape varieties which are utilized for production. The three grape varieties that are utilized for production are Chardonnay which is a white grape variety, Pinot Noir which is a black grape variety and Pinot Meunier, which is again a black or a red grape variety. Chardonnay contributes to elegance and bright citrus flavors of Champagne, whereas Pinot Noir brings the structure and richness to the wine and Pinot Meunier contributes to the aromas of Champagne. Champagne is a very protected name in Europe. To be featured or to be called as a champagne, there are few things that a producer has to keep in mind. There is an authority which takes care of production of champagne to avoid any kind of frauds or malpractices in the production of the wine. Let's take a look 
at what are the features of a real champagne or what are the characteristics for a sparkling wine to be called as champagne. For any sparkling wine to be classified as champagne, it has to be produced in the champagne region of France. The grapes that will be utilized for production of champagne should come from authorized regions only. And while making champagne of production of wine, the traditional method of method champenois is utilized. Let's move ahead and understand what are the different regions that are popular for making champagne. Champagne, first of all, is a region which is in France. Within Champagne region, there are four main sub-regions which are responsible for bringing the diversity and consistency to Champagne. Each sub-region or district is renowned for producing a specific type of a grape and a unique character to the grape variety. Hence, the unique type or unique character of the grape variety that is utilized in production brings out the flavors and aromas in the champagne. The first region is Rars. Rars is a predominantly Pinot Noir region. It means there is around 38% of production of Pinot Noir grapes. However, it also produces around 28% of Chardonnay, which is a white grape variety, which is utilized in production of Champagne. Moving to the second region, we have Mar. Mar is known for Pinot Meunier, which is grown in abundance. And Pinot Meunier are the grapes which brings different aromas to the wine. Moving ahead with the next region, we have Cote de Blanc. Cote de Blanc is again a predominantly Chardonnay grape growing region. And Chardonnay, which is a white grape variety, brings freshness to Champagne. Moving to the next sub-region, we have Cot de Cisa. Cot de Cisa produces Chardonnay grapes again. And this particular grapes brings the freshness and citrusy flavor to Champagne. Let's look at this video to understand about a brief history on Champagne. Champagne, the famous sparkling wine that has been a cultural icon for hundreds of years. Just the pop of a champagne cork is the sound of celebration. Referenced in classical music and hip-hop alike, champagne has been loved throughout history by everyone from Winston Churchill to James Bond. The history of champagne is a fascinating one, with the creation of sparkling wine dating back to the 17th century. Whilst the famous monk Dom Perignon is often credited with discovering the method for putting the fizz in champagne, he wasn't actually the first. He did, however, play a pivotal role in perfecting the method and declared that drinking champagne was like tasting the stars. So who perfected champagne? The first one who really developed um, the method is uh, the monk Dom Perignon that everybody knows, of course. I would not say he invented champagne, but he did a lot to perfect the process of making champagne. Um, by uh, controlling the second fermentation with his uh, essence of the method champenoise and also by blending. He was the first winemaker to, to start and try to blend different cru, different villages and try to find the perfect blend to make champagne. And after he, he started also to develop the, the second fermentation process and it was at this period that the, the first uh, sparkling wines appeared in champagne. The English scientist and physician Christopher Merritt was actually the first to discover and document the method of putting fizz into wine in 1662. Primarily, this was a way of preserving wines during long voyages at sea. When it came to promoting champagne internationally, the Grand Dame of Champagne was undoubtedly Madame Clicquot, also known as Veuve Clicquot, which means Widow Clicquot in English. 
This tireless, incredible businesswoman took over her husband's business after his death in 1805, and it was she that sowed the seeds for the global recognition that Champagne has today. A true trailblazer, Madame Clicquot was at the forefront of innovation, marketing, and export of Champagne during an era where women were excluded from the business world. Although sparkling wine is produced in many regions and countries, only sparkling wine produced in the wine region of Champagne can be labelled as such. Champagne and the name Champagne is protected. Of course, in, in all around the world, you can find what we call sparkling wine. Mm -hmm. Champagne is a sparkling wine. Uh, the name Champagne goes with the region, goes with the people, the savoir-faire. Champagne comes only from Champagne, and that's it. Today, there are over 15,000 growers across Champagne's 35,000 hectares of vineyards. These vary massively in size and scale of production. From the small local growers that often sell their grapes to the larger producers, to the 24 major houses, known as Grand Marc, which can produce tens of millions of bottles per year. Champagne has such an amazing history and so many passionate producers. It is a truly wonderful drink that can add sparkle to any occasion. Let's move ahead in the session and understand Metal Champenois. Metal Champenois is a very traditional method of making champagne. It is also known as fermented in bottle. And why is it fermented in bottle? Because champagne making is a very intricate and protected process being exclusive to the region of champagne. Champagne making or in Methyl Champenois, there are two fermentations that champagne has to go through. However, the process first starts with harvesting of the grapes. This particular picture belongs to a champagne vineyard located in Champagne region. Harvesting of grapes means when the grapes have reached their ripeness and there is a balance between sugar and acidity levels, only then the grapes are plucked or harvested. In Champagne region, according to law, all the producers should harvest their grapes with the help of hands and avoid any use of machinery in order to protect the grapes. Also, after the grapes are plucked, instead of putting in a very bigger containers, a certain quantity small buckets are utilized by very popular champagne houses in order to protect grapes from being crushed before being pressed. Now this particular part of small containers is important because if the grapes are crushed before they are pressed, the juice will come in contact with the skins which will change the color of the wine. And that will not lead to manufacturing of champagne. The harvest bunches, after they are plucked, will be rigorously sorted as only to make sure that the best berries or the best fruits are sent for production. Again, the sorting of the grapes is done by human hands in order to make sure that not even a single rotten grape or a grape which is spoiled or, if, or affected is sent for production. Sending the best berries for production is important in order to maintain the quality of the finished product. Once the grapes are sorted, we come to the next step of pressing. Pressing of the grapes, it means it is only pressed. Pressing is a very important step as champagne is a white wine which is utilized or which is made with the help of red grapes as well. I repeat, while making champagne there are three particular grape varieties which are utilized. One white that is Chardonnay and two red grape varieties which is Pinot Noir and Pinot Minier. In order to avoid crushing, the grapes are only pressed. 
That means the grapes are pressed enough to allow the free flowing juice to come out. And pressing is also protected by the authority which controls champagne production. It controls so much that it is allowed from around 4000 kg of grapes, only 2550 liters of juice can be extracted in making the best quality of champagne. This particular grape juice that is extracted is then divided into the Kuwe, which is the first pressing, which is the amount of 2050 liters of the press and then we have second pressing and third pressing. Second pressing which is called as Premier Thai whereas Duzian Thai which is the third pressing. the Kuwe is a premier quality of juice and is reserved by champagne houses for the best quality of the wines. After this particular step, the juice will be transferred to stainless steel vat or in some cases in oak barrels. This particular unfermented grape juice is known as must. Before it is sent for first fermentation, the must is allowed to rest so that any sediments that are present will settle at the bottom. Once the sediments that are settled at the bottom, they are removed. And then it comes to the next step of first fermentation. While stored, the juice will go under alcoholic fermentation. Alcoholic fermentation or primary fermentation in champagne, it is for around 10 days. Alcoholic fermentation is the process of yeast consuming sugars that are present naturally in the grape juice and it creates the natural byproducts of ethanol which is ethyl alcohol and carbon dioxide and also some heat is released. After this the next step from racking that is removing the new wine and transferring it to another vat which is termed as racking and then we have fining. Fining is a process or a step in which proteins like egg whites or icing glass which is a bladder of sturgeon fish are put in the wine and the proteins present start coagulating any sediments that are present to make the wine more clearer. Once this particular wine is ready, there is a very important step called as blending. After alcoholic fermentation, the cellar master or the head winemaker, also known as master blender of the champagne house, will undergo a critical process which is called as assemblage. Assemblage is basically blending. What happens in blending is wines of different villages or grape varieties from different villages or years will be blended together to make a desired wine style. Blending is truly an art. Champagne houses based on blending will be will produce a vintage bottle or a non-vintage bottle. A vintage bottle or vintage wine, it means the grapes that are utilized in production of vintage wine belong to only one particular year. Whereas Non-vintage, it means blending from different years. After the blending is done, we come to a very important step which happens in champagne making or method champenois, which is called as secondary fermentation. 
Once the blending is complete, the still wine or the wine that is created is bottled and a mixture of sugar and yeast which is called as liqueur de tehaj is added to start secondary fermentation. I relate this back to method champenois and understanding of fermented and bottled. This is what it means. Secondary fermentation for champagne will always happen in the bottle. Now, when the bottles are, when the secondary fermentation will happen in the bottle, the bottles are sealed with the crown cap and are kept in a cellar. Cellar is a room or is a place where the champagnes are stored. Once these bottles are put in the cellar, the added yeast in the wine will start consuming the sugar, creating alcohol and carbon dioxide in the wine bottle which is sealed. The carbon dioxide is unable to escape and it starts dissolving in the wine, giving it or causing it to become fizzy. Once all the sugars that are consumed in the dead yeast will settle down in the wine, and that is known as lees. Before we move to what is lees and understanding of it, please take a look at the picture. There are very certain types of racks that are utilized for stacking of these bottles and they are stacked on one top of the other. The particular racks that you see are called as pupitry racks. Now let's understand something called as Lee's aging. Once the secondary fermentation is started and once the yeast has consumed all the sugar, the yeast will die and it will form a layer in the wine bottle itself. The layer of the dead yeast is called as Lee's. However, it is not removed immediately. Lee's aging is allowed for the wine because the lees will impart bready and toasty characteristics to the champagne in a process which is called as autolysis. Champagne itself has a very strict production rules and all the producers must age their bottle on the lees minimum for 15 months for a non-vintage wine whereas if they are making a vintage wine it has to be 3 years. That means that particular bottle will at least stay for three years in the cellar. After at least the 15 months of the champagne bottle are completed, there is a next step which is called as riddling or remouage. This particular step, it is meant for removing the lees that is present in the bottle. This is done in a very technical way. The bottles which are placed on the pupitry racks are started to being rotated. This particular process of rotation is known as riddling. It is a slow rotation at tilting of bottles to a point where they become straight. It starts with the angle of 45 and it ends at the angle of 90 degrees which is absolutely vertical as and once the bottle becomes vertical, the neck of the bottle will start collecting all the ease that has to be removed from the bottle. The process of riddling or remouage it was traditionally done by hand and there was a person in charge for it. But today, most of the champagne houses prefer it to be done mechanically. After this yeast has been collected to the neck of the bottle, we have to remove it. And this particular step of removing the yeast is called as disgorgement. The neck bottles Sorry, the bottlenecks are frozen in the freezing solution which has a temperature of around minus 26 degrees 
and I repeat, only the neck of the bottle is dipped in it. Once the bottle is dipped, the neck will turn frozen and the crown cap is released. Once the crown cap is released, the internal pressure because of the carbon dioxide that has not been able to escape from the bottle will push the frozen sediment and along with that it will also push some amount of wine. Most of the champagne houses also take pride in writing the date of disgorgement because it helps for the consumers to understand how long the bottle has been re rested on the lease aging and a customer can expect the notes of the wine like that. Moving to the next important step, something called as dosage. While studying disgorgement, once the crown cap is open with the frozen sediment, there is some amount of wine that is lost. Now this wine or the amount of wine has to be put back into the bottle and then comes the step of dosage. It is done or the addition of the wine that is lost is done with the help of something called as liqueur de expedition. Liqueur de expedition is a mixture of similar wine and cane sugar which is added to the bottle. And this particular step will also decide what style of champagne would it be. Let me give you an example. If a wine or champagne label says brut, that means there is no sugar or very less amount of sugar that is present. And if a champagne label reads as do, it means it is very sweet. One has to understand what are the different styles of champagne or how the styles of champagne are created. This particular step of dosage or addition of cane sugar and wine will decide the style of the champagne. After dosage is added, the bottle is finally fixed with a cork. This particular cork will now be inserted and will be covered with a wire cage. Why? Because it helps the wire, it helps the cork to stay in the bottle. Despite the pressure that is present because of the bubbles, the wire cage, as you take a look in the picture, it is called as a graph. A graph will keep the cork in place. Now, or by now, we might think that this is the end of the process. No. There is also a step called as in-bottle aging. Before champagne can be consumed, champagne bottles are rested for either few weeks or several years, completely depending on the winery and the style that they desire to opt in. Let's understand different dosage levels or different levels of sweetness and dryness in champagne. The first one, something called as Brut Nashor or zero dosage. It means there is hardly any amount of sugar ranging between 0 to 2 grams per liter added to the bottle. And the label will read as Brut Zero or Ultra Brut. When it is extra brewed, the amount of sugar that is added which will, which will be 0 to 6 grams per liter. Moving to the next level, we have brewed, which will have amount of 0 to 15 grams of sugar per liter. Then we have extra dry, which will be sweeter compared to brewed. Because the amount of sugar will range between 12 to 20 grams per liter. Moving to another levels from where it gets sweeter, that is sec, and the range of sugars that are added is between 17 to 35 grams per liter. 
Demisec, which is between 33 to 50 grams per liter. Moving to the next one. Do, which is around 50 grams of sugar per litre and can range a little higher. Thank you. I request students of AISSMS to click down on the link given in the description to take a quiz on introduction to champagne. Thank you. Happy learning.